Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Virtue's Lost Award. It's been a little bit of time since I've touched this series, but now we're back. Let's just get right into it, shall we? Let's see. Oh yeah, we're about to make <laughs> our choice. So call make our final choice with D uh with uh God, I don't remember his name. The old man and the kid. So. I had a decision to make. Should I trust- oh, yeah, Cork and Temyoji. Well, I can believe they are telling the truth and still betray them. That would bring my BP to 6. It would be that much closer to 9. And choosing betray would guarantee they wouldn't try and escape without the rest of us. Betrayal seemed like the safe bets, but... Please! You've got to trust us! You've got to choose ally! You promised! I mean, sure I could betray easily enough, but Quark? What the hell was I gonna do? I don't trust Quark. Ten seconds remain until Ambidex game holding closes. Nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna trust Ally, even though I don't want to. <laughs> but it's been recorded. Please wait. Round three of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you. For your participation, Quark is probably going to betray us. Ambidex gates now opening. Results from round three of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. Please direct your attention to the results screen. Let's just betray. Yeah, I had a feeling. So, Clover, Temuji, and Quark can all escape. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. Hey, what the hell, guys? Why'd you betray me? Quark had nothing to do with this. I made the vote. Grandpa. All right, fine. Why did you break your promise, Samuel? I only promised you one thing. We wouldn't open the number nine door, even if we got nine points. What? So you're not going to leave? Not what I said. Of course we're going to leave. What? Look, see Clover over there? What? Don't tell me. Wait, Quark and Tenmyoji have. Words are barely out of her mouth when Tenmyoji and Quark were in pass. No! God damn it! At this point, just let them go, because it's like <laughs> the door's already open. Clover! Are you really going to leave? Well, yeah. Why else would I open the door? But why? I'm going to go call the others. So we can capture Zero Senior. Tenmyoji, are you and Quark going too? Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry, everybody. So, Sigma, happy? I kept my promise. Clover opened the door, not me. Raquel, I'm happy. That's some shady shit, Tenmyoji. You say so. I have to get out of here, and that's that. He's gotta pay for what he's done. He? Zero. You mean you know who Zero Senior is? Yeah. 
No point keeping it a secret now, I suppose. I know exactly who Zero Senior is. What? Interesting. He knows who it is. The number nine door has been opened. It will remain open for nine seconds. Let's go! Come on, guys! Time to move! Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I accidentally opened it. Oh, wait! This is for you, Mr. Sigma! Mark held something else. I looked down to see two pieces of folded paper. What's this? It's a letter! I wrote it in the director's office before the A-B game. I wanted to tell you what kind of guy Grandpa is. So, read it, okay? Press it into my hands. See you later, Mr. Sigma. Then he turned and ran toward the door, Temioji and Clover following in his footsteps. I was so surprised by the letter that I even tried and stop him. Before I could think of anything to say... See you. Goodbye. The number nine door has closed. This ends the nonary game. Thank you for your participation. As the game is over, all doors other than the number nine door have been unlocked. Escape is not possible. Please enjoy your stay. Shit! They're gone! All we can do now is hope they bring help back. Indeed. I agree. I looked down at Quark's letter and slowly unfolded it. His tanned writing was still slightly uneven, but he filled both pages with writing. He began to read. It was a really stormy day when he found me. He said the rain was coming down so hard it almost hurt, but somehow he managed to hear a baby crying. I guess he must have been crying pretty loud. He took me home and did his best to raise me, but he'd never been married or had a kid before, so I think it was really hard for him. He couldn't figure out how to mix the formula, so he was always carrying the directions around with him. Also, I guess I was a pretty eater, so if he didn't get the water to formula ratio just right, I wouldn't need it. Guess I was a pain, kind of a pain, huh? But he didn't give up, and now here I am. When he found me, I was really, really small, and he was worried that I might not make it. That's why he named me Quark. A Quark, really. A, <coughs> a really, really small thing, and I, I was really, really small, too. Grandpa didn't need to worry, though, because it turned out that I was pretty tough. When I was one, he forgot I was sleeping in the bed of his truck and drove off. I rode off and went off the back, but I didn't even get a scratch. I went, but I didn't even get scratched. I started walking when I was two, and he wasn't. And when he wasn't looking, I fell down the stairs. I didn't get hurt then either. When I was three, I got really sick, and I had a super high fever for a week, but eventually I got better. I guess you could say I'm pretty lucky. Anyways, I didn't really have any more accidents after that, and I was a pretty healthy kid. By the time I was six, I started helping Grandpa out with his work. His job was to gather junk from abandoned buildings. Then he'd fix it up or pull it out the use parts and sell them. There were plenty of abandoned buildings, but finding good stuff in them was hard. You would have to know which parts were useful or you could end up wasting a bunch of time. Every time I'd find something, he explained to me what it was, how it was supposed to work, how to fix it, all sorts of things. Usually though, I just wanted to finish up work so I could go to the theater. The theater came to our town once a week in a wagon. They showed news and movies. 
I went every single week, but Grandpa only went once in a while, and you can only go weeks where they show the movies. But yeah, I didn't know that I'll be adopted until I was... I didn't know that I'd been adopted until I was seven. One of the other kids on my block told me. Yes, after Grandpa found me, he looked all over town to try and find somebody who'd take me. The kid from my block actually had a mom. He asked her if she would take me too. Gotta admit, I was pretty shocked when I heard that. There weren't a lot of kids with parents around, so hearing that somebody lived with his actual mom was pretty impressive. I was also kind of surprised that Grandpa tried to get someone else to take me. Does that mean he didn't want me? The kid who told me about Grandpa trying to get rid of me was a real jerk. <laughs> he, was a total, he was totally spoiled and he'd brag to everybody about how he had a mom. He liked to come up to me while I was working and say stuff like, Must be hard not having a mother. It never bothered me before, but after I found that Grandpa had adopted me, I started to think that maybe he didn't really want me. If I could work on my own, then he would get rid of me. I was scared to know the truth, so I never asked him. Then one day he took me to a bar in our neighborhood. During the day, of course. He went there went there sometimes to drink scotch, but I never got to, I never gone before. When we got in he just walked up to the counter with that grumpy look he has, and I thought, oh no, he's gonna make me work here, but I was wrong. I saw him pass something to the bartender and then he picked me up and set me down on a stool next to the counter. The stool was Pretty high, especially for a seven-year-old kid, and my legs just dangled off it. It seemed really, really high to me, and I was pretty nervous. Eventually, the bartender came back over with a glass of scotch and another big glass full of something else. As I looked closer, I realized that the second glass was full of some sort of brown liquid with a scoop of ice cream in it. It took me a minute to realize what it was. A root beer float! I'd never seen one before. I was so surprised. Root beer was even more expensive than the nicest alcohol in the bar. To me, it was the and the other kids almost seemed like to me and the other kids it almost seemed like an urban legend and a real drink. But there it was right in front of me. I stared. I stared at the float. I wasn't sure it was real at that point, and then looked turned to look at Grandpa. He looked back at me. I didn't know what to do, so I turned to the bartender. He already turned around and moved off, though, so I figured he must have put the glass down in front of me on purpose. I still didn't seem like it could be real, and I was just staring at it when Grandpa told me to hurry up and drink it before the ice cream melted. His gruff voice sounded like an angel's. Is this really mine? He nodded. Words can't describe how awesome it was. I never tasted anything like root beer before. The creamy sweetness of the ice cream made my entire head feel light. I felt like the luckiest boy in the whole world. That's not an exaggeration, I really thought that. The rupee float was delicious, but what made it me happier was Grandpa. When I looked over at him, he was smiling. I know that's gotta be hard for you to imagine, but he really was. Right then, I didn't care whether he found me and adopted me or not. He bought me a rupee of floats. That made me way luckier than some kid who had a mother, but had never tasted root beer before. Of course, after we left the bar, he was the first kid I bragged to. So Grandpa and I were doing pretty good. Until the fight. I was in a super bad mood that day. I tore one of my shoes that morning. And some junk guy had yelled at me. All the junk was totally useless. The day was almost over and I was fed up so I just grabbed some random trash and took it back to the house. I showed what I found to Grandpa, he frowned. He started going through each thing I brought back, explaining why they were all useless. I get really mad and just yelled, I don't care. And he got mad and I couldn't take it anymore so I ran away. I was pretty upset and I started thinking that maybe Grandpa had only adopted me so he could raise me to work and make money for him. After a while, I went and hid in an abandoned building, but by then I'd started to calm down and think that maybe I should go back and apologize. It had started raining pretty hard, though, so I decided I should wait for it to stop. But that was just an excuse. The truth was that I was nervous. Part of me knew that I'd done something wrong, but I didn't want to admit it. The rain didn't stop, though, so I just sat there staring out of the gloomy gray sky. Imagine Grandpa coming to get me. 
It kept raining all night and he never showed up. I gave up waiting and decided it was time to go home. I was about halfway there when I heard somebody groaning. At first I thought I should just ignore it and not get involved, but I went over anyways and it was Grandpa. He was totally soaked and I could tell right away that he'd been there for a really long time. I yelled and he opened his eyes a little bit. He smiled weakly and said he was glad I was safe. He spent all night out in the rain looking for me. He felt awful. I felt awful. Grandpa had been on the rain looking for me so long that he collapsed. I was horrible. He heard me crying in the rain, but I hadn't heard him. As I ran to get the doctor, I promised whatever god might be listening that if they would only save Grandpa, I'd never ask another I would never ask for another rupee of float again. I had a real bad fever and his temperature wouldn't go down for days. The doctor said that if I kept if he kept up he'll die. If he died, then I'll be all alone. And there wouldn't be anybody left to care about me. The thought of that happening terrified me. Fortunately, I must have passed on some of my luck to Grandpa because a week later his fever finally broke. I was glad he wasn't going to die, but I was also a little scared. What if he had decided he didn't want a stupid kid like me around anymore? My plan was to apologize as soon as he woke up, but when the moment came, my brain just stopped. Grandpa started to talk and it took me a minute to realize he was apologizing. I didn't know what to think. He explained that he was an old man and that meant he was probably going to die sooner rather than later. He was strict with me because he wanted to make sure I'd be able to make it on my own after he was gone, but maybe he'd been a little too strict. All the things I'd worry about had been stupid and selfish. Grandpa cared about me a whole lot. He'd been worried when I ran off and he'd gone out to this rain to look for me. I tried to apologize, but when I opened my mouth, I just started crying. I don't think I cried that much since I was a baby. But he just smiled and patted my head. I asked him if he ever regretted adopting me. His eyes got all wide and he said, Of course not. He told me that he was looking for a real important lady. And because that, he had to give up on pretty much everything else in his life. But when he took me in and started raising me, he felt like he got some of what he lost back. That was when I decided to stay with him forever. Even if he said I couldn't. And repeating for lighters. Yeah, this was so short. Let's continue on and choose to betray. One minute. Everything blah 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 blah. Going to betray. It's been recorded. Raw. Results from please direct. Results have been recorded. Blah 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 blah. Betray an ally. Betray and betray. Now only Clover gets to leave. Points have been assigned. Please hey. check. Yeah, that one's. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> hey, what's the Quark deal? Quark had nothing to do with it. I entered the vote. But why did you choose betray? <laughs> Couldn't I ask you the same thing? I don't really think this is the time for a fight, though. Look, Clover's over by the door. Like now. Oh, the number nine door. Fuck, she opened it. 
If... Ugh. Why? Clover! If they're all gonna be like trying to stop her. Clover? What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm going to call the others. I'll get what? justice for Alice. Justice? Wait, what do you mean? The number nine door has been opened. It will remain open for nine seconds. Time for me to go. No! Please, Clover, wait! Like hell, I'm just gonna let you walk out of here. He loved at Clover's fist raised. Clover easily avoided him and moved out the door. Goodbye. Got the one last glimpse of her face as he shook through the door. It was a mask of ice. Here closes the door. The number this ends as they escape, escape leaves. We don't need to hear it again. Game over. Not mean to. Ba 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 ba. Yeah. I don't know why this game be skipped. Okay, so let's see here. So I don't know if they can be saved. I oh yeah, cause that I need bomb stuff. Who planted? I do know where he planted the bombs. But I don't know. Let's see if I actually know it. Know it. Yeah, because. Blah, 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 blah. This is just bomb stuff. Okay, so I don't. No, I do know it's Dio. I don't actually know it's Dio yet, so. Um, we could go here. Oh, crap. Okay, hello. So, yeah, I don't know the director's office stuff yet. I'll go see here. There isn't enough antiviral medication. So, basically, uh, for context, uh, Alice is sick and Quark is sick with the Radical 9 virus. And you ju one of the groups just found the Radical 9 and so we're just like, oh, how do we fix it and stuff? Ex yeah, with Zelvar. So we only have one shot to cure it. So, IG Emu Goblin. Do you know what Immunoglobulin is? It's another name for antibodies. Some people have antibodies that can fight off Radical 6. Oh, Radical 6, not Radical 9. IG Replicator? Replicator makes it sound like it makes copies of stuff. Oh, it's like a copy machine? Yeah. Probably copies IG, whatever that is. Any idea? Who knows? Ice cream by the gallon? 
If you want to see all of those quotes, <laughs> refer back to one of my previous videos somewhere in the playlist that I'll have at the end of the video. That's it. I got it. The IG replicator in the laboratory. It's an immunogoblin replicator machine. Uh, what? If I told you I had a nice antibody. It can copy immunogoblin antibodies. Luna just said Axelovar is made from antibodies. That means we... Oh, it gets Hold on a moment. There is a strange device in the laboratory that says IG Replicator on it. Clover and I examined it thoroughly when we were in that room. Yeah, we never could figure out what it did, though. Exactly. My question is, how do you know about it, Sigma? I saw it when I was... The... When was that? Um... Probably when you were looking for Alice, right? Oh, Dear was wrong. I hadn't gone to the laboratory when I was looking for Alice. I didn't think I'd ever been to the laboratory, so how did I know about the IG replicator? If what he's saying is true, then we should be able to duplicate the Excelivir. That would mean we could cure Alice and Quark. Hmm. Let's go have a look then. The laboratory, right? Yeah. No time to waste. Now nodded. We can't leave them here all alone. Luna, do you think we can stay behind and look after them? Oh, of course. I'd be happy to. Alright then, let's go. so many times it's kind of crazy <laughs> so this is the lab huh yes where's this IG replicator thing right here so this can copy the Excelivir? I think so. What are we waiting for? Calm down, all right? Don't rush me. I carefully lowered the small vial of Excelivir into the slot on the side of the machine. Empty vial already protruded from the other side. Presumably that was where the duplicate Excelivir would go. Ready? When I push this button, it should- Skip it. Just press the damn thing. Right. And press. Did it work? Have a look. The empty vial has something in it now. And the vial Sigma used remains as it was. It does not seem to have lost any of its contents. So, it worked? Would have been pretty bad if it hadn't. Alright, let's get this thing back to the infirmary. Reach down and put all the files from the machine in, intending to slip them deftly into my pocket. Ah, what shit. happened? Sorry, my hand slipped. You dropped one of them? Yeah, just one though. What in the hell? What if you'd broken it, you idiot? Come on. If we broken it, then we could have just made another copy. Before Timmy as you could reply, Fi spoke. Uh, guys? I was surprised to hear her voice coming from near my feet. I looked down, staring at something beneath the table. You see? It did break! No, the vial's fine. See? She had it up in one hand, but didn't move her eyes. Then what the heck is going on down there? Take a look. A bomb! She slid back from a chair quickly and silently. The rest of us bent down the floor. Bob 2 is in the lab. So, wait, let me make a note of this. So, uh, Bob 2 in the lab. Yeah, Bob. 
is bomb. Something, something was in the garden. Something was in the in, uh, cruise quarters. Just making a note, just I remember. Bomb. Whoa. Really? That makes two then. Guess Kay was right after all. So there were more bombs. So it would seem. Was this here when you guys came through the first time? No, it was not. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Then somebody must have said it while we were looking for Alice. Who the hell would do that? We were all out looking for Alice. It could have been anybody, any of us. No, not any of us. I was back in the infirmary. Quark was still out, so I was keeping an eye on him. So we shouldn't consider you a suspect, is that right? Yeah. Quark's off the list, too. But Tenmyoji, you have no proof that you spent the entire time in the infirmary, do you? What? You could have quietly made your way to the laboratory, planted the bomb... That's insane! Listen to yourself! There's no way in hell I'd have left Quark all by himself to go plant a goddamn bomb! Tenmyoji was still staring furiously at Kay when Clover spoke up. Hey, what's this thing? I turned in time to see you grab something up from under the table. It looks like a... memory card. Where was it? Um, right under the bomb. It was down on the floor under the table. Could it have been put here by the same person who set the bomb? There was nothing like it here when we examined this room. You think they dropped it accidentally? Unless it was left here intentionally, yes. I imagine so. What do you think's on it? Let's take a look. Could I see it for a minute? Yeah, I guess so. I plucked the card from out of her hand and looked around the room. Nothing. Shoot, no dice. We'll need to plug in something that can read memory cards, but I don't see anything here. So what do we do? Come on, if I knew that, I'll be doing it. Ten minutes remain. All play if no vote. Uh, guys, I think maybe we should get back to the top floor. Yeah, you're right. We've got what we came here for. Um, what should we do about the, uh, bomb? Not much we can do except leave it here. Alice said it'd be dangerous to touch them. True, but... Drop it. We can talk about the bombs later. Right now we need to take care of Alice and Quark. Right. So we just go back to the infirmary, give them the Xalavir, and then head to Flora, the Flora A, right. A warehouse. This ought to do it. It might take a little while, but they should recover. Her voice was quiet as she backed away from Alice and Quark. In her hand was the injection gun. She carefully removed the empty vial and placed it gently in the cabinet with the other one. While we were in the laboratory, Luna had moved Clark to a crude cot. They both looked peacefully as they slept. The madness I've seen on their face with their faces before was completely gone. Are they really going to be all right? Yes. The analysis I did on the files confirmed that the duplicate was real Excelivir. Good. The original was genuine too, of course. Now that they've been treated... It's only a matter of time before the virus is eliminated. I believe so, yes. Oh man, what a relief. I was really worried. Over grins. Agreed. Gave her a reassuring pat on the back. Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All right, everybody. We can be relieved later. Right now we need to get to the AB rooms and fast. Damn. Don't even have time to catch our breath. Come on, let's go. Flora Warehouse is waiting.
Huh? Where's Simeonji? Oh, he stayed back in the infirmary. What? Why? Well, when we were all heading out, I noticed he wasn't doing anything. So I asked him if he was coming with us, and this is what I got. I'm still worried about Quark and Alice. I think I'll stick around and make sure they're okay. I see. That means that Phi's only opponent will be Dio. One-on-one, -on -one, huh? Ugh. That's cool. Nothing to worry about. I plan to choose Ally. You know why? Because I've only got one BP. Exactly. If you chose Ally and I betrayed you, your BP would drop below zero and... Well, we know what happens then. I want to win, but I'm not that desperate. You see what I'm saying, right? Tenmyoji and Dio are a pair. Tenmyoji only had one BP left. Since Dio said he's going to pick an ally, Fai can't really pick anything else. If she does, Tenmyoji will... Um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Kay and I are going to be going one-on-one -on -one too, right? Since Quark's still sleeping... That is correct. How many BP do you guys have? I've got six. As do I. This will be a tough one, then. If one of them can get the other to ally, and then betray that person, the betrayer will have nine points. Look, Kay, I know you don't really have any reason to trust me, but... I know. You would like us both to vote ally, yes? I yeah. I agree. If we were to both betray, then we would gain no points. We would lose nothing either, but that's hardly relevant. If both of us cooperate, then we will both gain two points, which is much more beneficial. Right. Okay, good. You're really gonna do it, right? Yes. Promise? Promise. One minute remains. Un Shit, this is bad. We need to move now. Indeed. Shall we? Come on, come on. I, Dio, K, Fi, and Clover all took off imme immediately, heading into different A-B rooms. Counting from the left, Dio went into room 3, K went into room 4, Fi and Cleaver went into rooms 5 and 6, respectively. So all that's left is room 1, 2, 1, and 2. I left Luna and myself. What do you think? What do you... What do you think about taking the one on the far Sounds left? good. With that settled, we headed into our AB room number one. to choose ally because I like Luna. 30 seconds well, remain I'm actually gonna save it. And the next game polling closes. I'm actually going to save it <coughs> and let you guys see what happens in the next episode. So, I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives. May the stars forever guide your path, forever might lead you into the future. Bye, everybody.